So here are the steps you need to follow if you are trying to file business tax returns online. Step number one, you need to choose a tax preparation software tool. The whole thing here is that, you know, you have a, a constellation of tax preparation tools, but in our view, in our experience over the last 20 to 25 years, only five or six are really that good. So you have H&R Block. So H&R Block, in our view, is the best overall because uh, not only is it a, a trusted name in tax preparation, not only for individuals, but also for businesses, but also you have the fact that they have a, a great customer service, okay? And they really offer a straightforward user interface that makes it easier to do your taxes accurately for the first time, not only individually, but also business-wise. Besides the H&R Block, you also have Tax Act. So Tax Act is, is, in our view, again, is great for partnerships and corporations. So if you are out there, you have an LLC, and you're thinking about filing your LLC business tax returns online, Tax Act could be a great candidate that you might want to consider. And it is uh, they have an, a, an option to complete tax filings for partnerships and corporations completely online and is the only place you can prepare taxes for a partnership or S corporation with either a PC or Mac online, which is why we love it. You also have Tax Slayer. So this is great for self-employed. So if you have, uh, if you are, if you are an independent contractor and you are looking for a, a tax software to actually prepare your tax, your business taxes online, Tax Layer could be a great, a great candidate. You also have TurboTax, which is great for virtual assistance. So TurboTax has the same brand recognition, brand name recognition as the uh, H&R Block, but uh, TurboTax is really great when it comes to virtual assistance. And so. If you, if you need that kind of support, if you need that kind of uh, online uh, assistance, go for TurboTax. And then you also have FreeTax USA. And what we love about FreeTax USA is that they are very cheap. They are very affordable. So if you are a business, if you have a business and you are really worried about, I would say, your budget and you want to really uh, spend as little as possible on your business tax preparation uh, processes, you might want to think about free tax USA. I, actually, the name it says uh, free tax, but uh, when it comes to business taxes, it's not entirely free. It's not entirely free. It might be free for individuals, but for businesses, you have to pay something. So step number one, you want to choose a tax preparation tool, the suitable one for you. Step number two, you want to ascertain integration with existing software. But before, I want to say welcome back to the show. Really appreciate having you here. It's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful experience. We are having a conversation about how to file business tax online, tax returns online. So what, what do I mean by integration? So the thing here is that you probably have right now some software tools within your business, right? You have uh, maybe you have QuickBooks for accounting. You have uh, maybe... Uh, maybe Zoho for CRM for client relationship management, you have a constellation of software tools. And the thing is that if you want to actually use a tax preparation tool and you want to file your, your business tax return online, make sure there is a, a direct correlation. There is a strong, a direct integration with existing software that you have. Okay. And uh, basically there are ways to actually check that. You can just make sure that you are able to import your files into your favorite accounting software. In other words, the thing is, you see, the thing is that you have accounting, you have an accounting software right now, right? So you are you are actually doing your bookkeeping, you are doing your transactional uh, your transactional record keeping through an accounting software tool such as QuickBooks, let's say Zero, Wave, Expensify, and whatnot. Just make sure there is a direct integration between the software tool that you choose and the accounting software that you currently use. Because the last thing you want is to ask is to basically try to do things manually. You don't want to do that. It's a waste of time. It's, it's not effective. It's not really good. Okay. So look for a, a software tool that syncs with your existing software pretty good in terms of uh, manual data entry. You don't want that. You want automatic data entry. You, you want to be able to uh, migrate your data from uh, your existing accounting software to the uh, the tax software, okay? Make sure that you are able to, that you uh, pay attention to error protection. In other words, you, you don't want to lose uh, all your data. And please pay attention to also data privacy. One thing I want to say here is that if you need help, 
if you have questions and you are you are just lost, you're confused, please just uh, put your question in the comment section below and we'll certainly get back to you. OK, we have uh, an extensive experience when it comes to all the existing tax preparation software tools for businesses. And we'll be we'll be able to tell you exactly which one actually uh, fits your specific profiles. It's very important that you prevent errors that you are able to bring to bring in any source files into your accounting system and also into the software into the uh, tax account the tax preparation software and uh, there are some configurations that we can actually talk to you about but please make sure that you that you actually fit that you actually check the integration with your existing software step number three you want to contact the irs if needed by the way folks I want to remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about how to file business tax returns online, okay? Everything happens online. You don't want to actually send a paper form to the IRS. You don't want to send an 1120 or 1120S or 1065 to the IRS. You want to do things online. Save, you know, you don't want to waste any time and actually get your refund. If you file an 1120 return, you want to get your, you want to get your refund ASAP. And if you file a 1065 or 1120S, this is considered an informational return. So you actually get your, re your refund at the personal level pretty fast. Okay. Now, you want to contact the IRS. Why? Well, because sometimes you might be having some uh, missing data. Okay. And the IRS always has all the data anyway. So think about there are some numbers you want to contact. So the IRS phone number for businesses is one 800 829 four nine three three that's the number for businesses and the phone line is open from 7 a.m to 7 p.m your local time the, the good thing is that they adapt to your time so if you are if you're in california they will adapt to pacific time okay and you want to call the irs normally even though the uh, the window is open from 7 a.m to 7 p.m it's better to call after 10 a.m and closer to filing deadlines okay so this is really important and it's really better to call later in the day or earlier in the day so at those extremes one thing you need to understand here is that the IRS will not deal with the following issues by phone information easily found on the IRS website tax advice complaints or questions about tax law they're not tax advisors okay and the refund status or request for forms or transcripts and the thing is you can call the IRS for everything else if you owe money if you would like to discuss a payment plan if you are being audited if you receive a, a notice in the mail and have questions about it it will request a payoff amount to request additional time for an IRS deadline to check the status of uh, or or ask questions about an IRS action taken against you to check the status of a payment made so there is a constellation of things that you can call the IRS for. The, the important thing is that make sure, be very, very, uh, I would say, be uh, cautious when calling the IRS and make sure that you have specific questions to ask when you call them because they're very busy and they, they really want to make sure that they maximize their time with you. Very important. So only contact them when you need to. Step number four, you want to get your records in order. Boss, I'm talking to you about how to file tax returns for your business online, right? So number one, you want to choose a tax preparation tool. Number two, you want to ascertain the integration with your existing software within the business. Number three, you want to contact the IRS if needed. In other words, you need some, uh, some explanation or you need some uh, records. And step number four, you need to get your records in, in order. See, the whole thing here is that when we talk about business tax preparation online you got to have you got to have data to back up whatever you claim on your tax return right whether you whether you file form 1120s 1120 or 1065 you gotta have you, you gotta have data and even if you are a single member llc or you are a sole proprietorship and you file form 11 or you farm you file form uh schedule you file schedule c right profit and loss from business and you integrate that with your your formula 1040 you still need to back up whatever you actually uh, claim on your tax return. So the thing is that you need different things for, to actually uh, get your records in order. Personal information, I'm talking about social security number, your address, your date of birth, your last year's tax returns, employer identification number. So you need to actually uh, get to yours. 
you also need to collect everything related to your earnings and expenses and on the earnings side this could be invoices you send to clients records of any goods sold to customers right sales records that note money coming into your business on the expenses side collect receipts for any cost you incurred during operation think of the following things rent receipts for your small business office supplies employee salaries client launches mileage records what i'm trying to say here is what you need to actually back up whatever uh, documentation whatever uh, deduction you actually put on the 1040 or 1065 11 20 yes or 11 20. it's very important to really always think that if the IRS were to challenge the claims that you are making you got to be in a situation where you have to say listen hey let what a minute what a minute IRS. I know exactly why I'm actually deducting. I'm writing off this amount and here are the receipts. It's all about substantiating whatever you charge, whatever you actually, um, whatever you claim on your tax return. Okay. So please make sure that you have an effective bookkeeping procedure in place. Very quintessential. Step number five, you want to find the right tax form. For your particular business structure before i explain this further please i want to remind everybody of today's topic we're having a very sweet conversation about how to file business tax return online so what do i mean by this by uh, finding the right tax form for your business structure see the whole thing is when we talk about filing your business tax return online whether you do it online or via the via usps mail or any other form, whatever. You got to make sure that the uh, the return you send to the IRS is in sync with your business structure. What do I mean by that? Let me break it down for you. Let me break it down for you. So if you are a sole proprietorship or LLC with one member, that's what we call an LLC, a single member LLC, you have to file form 1040 with Schedule C. So when we talk about single member LLC, this could be a uh, an independent contractor, anybody who is self-employed, you will qualify as a sole proprietorship. Even if you are, even if you are an LLC, by default, the IRS will consider you a disregarded entity at the business level. At the legal level, in your state, you can still be an LLC with all the uh, the perks that comes with uh, that come with uh, preservation of your personal assets. I just want to specify that. If you are a partnership or you're an LLC with multiple members. Then you have to file form 1065 and then you have to also follow, follow along schedules k1 for each member each uh each member of uh the alc okay so this applies only for applies only to partnerships or alcs with multiple members that's what we call multi-member alcs if you're a corporation or alc that that elect to be corporations then you need to file something called form 1120 and that's due actually uh, april 15th okay this is important if you file uh, if you basically file as an s corporation then you really need to file form 1120s okay this is important now one thing i want to say here is that even if you're an llc you can elect to be taxed as a partnership as an llc as a corporation or as an s corporation so the election happens at the IRS level, if you want to become an an, uh, an S corporation, you need to file form 2553. If you need to be uh, considered a corporation, you need to file a certain form. I forgot the number right now, but it's uh, it's important that you need to file the right form. Okay, so anything you do, file the right form. In other words, it's called to elect the tax status. Step number six. You need to file your taxes online. See, the whole thing here is that the the topic of today's conversation is how to file business tax returns online, right? So please be sure to file online. See, the thing is that you can choose a tax preparation tool, but sometimes uh, the the tool may not apply to you, may not apply to your business and your particular geography, the states you're actually applying from. See, the whole thing is that some software tools do not cover the whole United States. Let me give you an example. If you are in, in, you are in Hawaii or you are in, uh, in uh, Alaska, you're not in continental United States. So you're not part of your state. It's not part of the 48th 
the 48 contiguous states. So you have a situation there. So you have to contact customer service to make sure that they actually can cover you. So what I, one thing I want to say here is that there are several ways to actually uh, file your taxes online. Okay, so you can you, you can have a free file. So everything happens on the IRS website. So basically, if you go on the IRS website, you have free file. In other words, it is a process. It is a scheme that allows you to actually file for free. And there are some providers that have that have actually partnered with the IRS to offer taxpayers free filing services. So make sure when you go to the IRS website, make sure that those uh, those uh, agents actually fit with your specific situation. You also have a free file fillable forms. In other words, uh, there is a system in place where you can get, you can actually just uh, file your forms online by actually filling everything uh, by having fillable forms online. But again, everything happens online. Everything happens on, on the IRS website. If you have any question, please let us know. We have done extensive research about this and we can certainly guide you as to the best way to actually uh, take care of those free, free file fillable forms. Okay, those are really important. And the thing is, please don't forget, whenever you are late, apply for an extension. It's always better to actually file your taxes late than never. Okay. If you expect to miss your filing deadline, do not worry about the IRS throwing the book at you for not filing your taxes. You can always apply for an extension. While this gives you some extra breathing room for getting your, ta your tax preparation complete, it's important to know that you still have to pay your estimated taxes by the original deadline. Step number seven, you want to pay your taxes, right? So the whole thing is you want to know how to file business tax return online. So it's really about time to fork over the amount of taxes you owe the IRS. Most businesses are required to pay taxes four times a year in estimated tax installments. If you want to calculate how much tax you will owe, you actually can go on the, on the IRS website and or on other uh, other independent tax calculator platforms, and you will, you'll you'll be able to, to do the calculation yourself. It's not really complicated, okay? And so you can pay estimated tax online or by phone via the IRS payments gateway. For corporations, payments must be filed through the electronic federal tax payment system, the EFTPS. If you have concerns about paying your taxes or you have fallen behind payments, you, you can check out the IRS Offer and Compromise program. Basically, they offer flexible options for businesses struggling with their tax bill. So this is really good. And one thing I want to say also is that um, you never want to forget about your other tax responsibilities. Okay, so filing your federal tax return is important, but so is keeping up on your on your state and local taxes. Okay, local government and their the Department of Revenue will charge property taxes, sales and use taxes, and more depending on your business operations. Sometimes you might have to pay excise taxes. So you always want to work with your accountant or tax professional to ensure you're not missing any important dates or taxes. Okay, and one thing I want to say here is that please, always you want to you want to bake, you want to bake tax planning into your overall strategic planning for the year. See, the whole thing is that when we talk about tax planning, it shouldn't be only something you do uh, around tax time. No. Like something you do around February or, or March to sort of take care of your taxes or of your business taxes. It must be integral. It must be uh, embedded. It must be inherent in the overall strategic operations of your of your business. This is why we always tell uh, folks on our show to actually have uh, a CPA, an enrolled agent or a tax attorney all year long. It's really, really worth it to make sure that they are part of the conversation. You want those people to be part of the conversation. Any major decision that you want to make, make sure you have a tax person at the table and ask him or her what the, the tax implications are. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about how to file business tax return online. So step number one, choose a tax preparation tool. Number two, you want to ascertain integration with existing software. Number three, you want to contact the IRS if needed. Number four, you want to get your records in order. 
Number five, you want to find the right tax form for your business structure. Six, you want to file your taxes online. And seven, you want to pay your taxes. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. God bless you. I'll see you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.